what's up everyone so i'm actually recovering really well i think i'll be like fine in like a week but i can walk now i can breathe fine now i'm feeling a lot better and i wanted to watch the new bora city magazine video talking about the current smear campaign against bts so i heard about the whole high mess something about bong being jealous about new jeans and about how he only cares about money something like that and then that he kind of talked shit on espa it it seemed like it was a mess but this Bora City video says the smear campaign against bts now when it comes to the controversy i actually didn't know that bts was involved i don't know why they didn't do anything did they they're in the freaking military. They got nothing to do with what's going on here. But let's watch the video and find out. If you're expecting a detailed explanation of what is happening between Ador and Hype, I highly recommend getting informed about the entire case and how multiple K-pop groups are being affected. This is a channel dedicated to BTS, so I will heavily focus. Oh yeah, and I also heard that I think Bong was jealous of New Jeans, so he decided to start his own similar group, Illit. Pretty sure that's what's going on. It's on the current smear campaign against BTS. Wait, wait, wait. BTS targets of rumors and unwilling victims of a corporate war. What does this got to do with them? As a result of this corporate conflict. But there is so much more to this story. This video will only address one of the many consequences of this conflict and is mainly directed at BTS's fans. Army. What? Wait, ARMY were involved in this? First, some necessary background. Hype is a company known for its multi-label system. That means that they own multiple music labels. Yep, some a labels lot. already existed before and Hype bought them, while others were created from scratch. Mingyi Jin was an SM executive for 17 years before Ooh, girl's generation. Hype, where she was supposed to create and manage a girl group under the sub-label Source Music. However, Hype gave her the opportunity to create her own group Ooh. under a new label with a capital funding of 16.1. One Damn, did she so make Jin new was jeans? appointed as the CEO of the new label Ador, and she formed the group New Jeans. The hey, New Jeans did pop off, right? They got great songs, a lot of popularity. Way, she owns 18% of Ador, while 80% belongs to Hive. Hey, 18 is quite a lot. Hive has recently requested Mingyi Jin to resign from her CEO position because they Wait, have secured what? evidence of her planning to take over management rights of Ador on a secret plan titled Project Ooh. 1945, named after South Korea's independence year. Damn, can she do that? Trying to acquire Ador? Ah, what are even the legal things you gotta do to take it <laughs> according to hive mingy jean and ador's vice president mr a were planning to leave hive and become independent and, by wrongfully and taking new jeans with them Oh, come on, that would cause a lot of problems for him, wouldn't it? Or a lot of controversy. Obtaining and leaking private hype contracts, company data, health records, and Dang. pictures of artists. Yeah, that's and pretty bad. Sensitive internal information with outside financial investors and sources. Hype claims that wow. the internal investigation showed that Ador's vice president played an important role in the leaking of these documents S by moving from hype to Ador and Dang. bringing with him key information that could make Project 1945 possible. Yeah, that and sounds this plan illegal. Would have included blackmailing hype. As a response Whoa. to these and many more accusations, Mingyi Jin released a statement and then made a press conference where she denied most accusations in tears and accused Hype of Of course, things. gotta pull Among out the tears. Accusations, <laughs> she said that Hype and Chairman Man Shi Hyuk helped the sub label Belief Lab copy her group New Jeans while creating their new group. That's Island. what I heard. In her official statement, Mingyi Jin said, Eyelid is copying New Jeans in all aspects of entertainment activities. Including now, hair I have not heard. In, I thought it was Illit, but I guess Islet. Honestly, I haven't heard of their song, so I'm not sure, but apparently it's like new jeans. Makeup, clothing, choreography, photos, videos, and event appearances. So Adore states that all Mihi Jin is doing is protecting these factors from being plagiarized. They refer to these factors as New Jin's cultural achievements. Mihi Jin also stated that promoting Islet as New Jin's junior group or New Jin's younger sister group is unacceptable, ignoring the fact that New Jin's was also promoted as BTS's younger sister group. 
Moreover, Mihi they were accuses Banshee Hill I mean, of I know uh, Seventeen was promoted as like BTS's younger younger brothers, but New Jean says BTS's younger sister. They're like so young and like. Their debut was so far apart, I don't even know if that makes any sense. Ignoring her complaints about Eyelet, and says that these complaints are the reason why Hype wants her out of Ador. But Eyelet is not the only group. Mihi Ji and Ador reportedly attempted to gather evidence that groups Eyelet, Duo Su, and Rice plagiarized new jeans. A Hype insider said that one of All the of priorities them? part of Hype's internal investigation involved Mihi Jin interviewing agency staff members of these three rookie groups and monitoring public opinion in online communities to strengthen their case that those groups plagiarized new jeans. In contrast, Ador stated that such claims are completely unfounded. Apparently, titles are very important for Mihi Jin. She claims that the group Les Serafim stole the momentum of of the first hype girl group that was supposedly promised to her. Hive accuses a third person of being involved. Hive alleges that Ador's vice president requested a foreign Ooh. securities analyst to review the outline of the independence plan and arrange a meeting with a foreign investor to facilitate the sale of Ador. Initially, the claim about this investor was that he went to South Korea for a Hive meeting, but this third person made sure the investor talked to Ador's executives prior to the Hive meeting. Chat Damn. logs between Ador's vice president and Min Hee Jin revealed that Ador did meet this foreign investor. A newer development being reported from Damn, the Ador first getting greedy. Report is that this was not just a foreign investor. Reportedly, Min Hee Jin actually met the chairman of the company Dunamu and neighbor officials over dinner to propose her takeover plans and pressure Hype to what? abandon Ador. This is a bigger deal than Min Hee Jin talking to a random foreign investor because yeah. he holds 49% of the shares of Hype's waivers company and Dunamu is the third third largest shareholder in Hype, and they have the right so to they're, nominate they're powerful. directors. So if there are executives who could pressure Hype to abandon Ador, it would be them. The investors knew that this could be a massive conflict of interest, so they were the ones to report this meeting. Additionally, Hype claims that the third person involved was the one to propose civil actions against other labels and Hype corporate. Ador's vice president has denied any involvement with an independence plan and admitted that the 1945 files do exist, but are just his personal thoughts. 1945 files? She refuses to resign or turn in her company laptop and says that her conversations about independence were not serious because she knows seizing control would be impossible. Okay, so does that mean new jeans isn't going to be, you know, separated? Did she like double down and go back when was like, ah, oh, shit, I got caught. <laughs> She also adds that her contract has contradictions and this bounds her to Hype forever. I recommend reading more about these accusations and the responses by Hype and Mihi Jin because there's a lot more about this case and there's new information every day. Project 1945 involves multiple Hype groups and way more accusations against Hype and Ador. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I only wanted to explain the basics necessary to show how BTS became part of this conflict. What? Because this is a BTS channel. Interesting. When when I heard about the whole the whole controversy, you know, I I didn't see BTS mentioned. Although BTS has nothing to do with this conflict, they are now in the middle what? of everything. Hype claims to have secured a conversation of Min Hee Jin talking to a shaman about her project 1945 and BTS. Snippets shaman, of the conversation what? were released in the form of a forensic transcript. So apparently, this shaman chose the name Ador for the label, helped Min Hee Jin choose her employees and take over plans, and did witchcraft on Hive executives and BTS. Wait, 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 wait. I think it would be better for me if BTS went. What do you think? To which the shaman respond. Wait, how do they know what like the private conversations between the shaman were were like? How did they get these conversations? I don't, I don't think shamans like keep a whole 
record of exactly what they say. But, I mean, it says that I'm trying to send them. It's not like they want a gold medal. This is believed to be hinting at ritualistic acts to get BTS member to enlist in the military. I mean, they, they had to do that anyways. I mean, they stated, I think it would be advantageous for me if they weren't here. The ritualistic acts were also targeted at high executives. The conversation shows crazy that stuff. did witchcraft to send BTS away because it would benefit Mihi Jin if BTS weren't here. Hive claims that Mihi Jin also discussed BTS's military service with Ator's vice president on February 4th. They mentioned BTS not being able to return for a year, and because this makes the company weak, Banshee Hyuk can be finished off. As part Damn. of the process of trying to hurt Hype through BTS, Mingyi Jin also tried to contact the accountant who manages BTS with no apparent reason. So Mingyi Jin was doing all the preparations and waiting for the moment when the seven members were gone. But to do what exactly? In Hive's forensic data, there is a record of Mingyi Jin's instruction to prepare for a public opinion campaign starting in April. April a whole comes and campaign? the plan is exposed by Hive, but all of the BTS members ended up going to the military. So Project 1945 starts as planned. That's what they wanted. First, according to Hive's internal investigation, Mingyi Jin told an outsider that Chairman Ban Shi Hyuk is actually where he is right now because he copied her. She reportedly said, in fact, Wait, he's what? copied from me and come this far. As well as, Chair I mean, he clearly only came this far because of BTS. Chairman Ban Shi Hyuk copied me and created BTS. Others say the translation is closer to Chairman Bong copied me and made BTS. Which which of her groups did he copy? What? Well, BTS is like old. Chairman Ban Shi Hyuk copied me and created a BTS. In any case, she oh a BTS, to not copied okay. Me and created a BTS. A BTS. In any case, she completely denies to have said this. Many wonder what exactly she means when saying that BTS copied her. This is not a definitive answer, but many correlate the fact that starting in 2014, BTS were accused of copying an SM group about things as common as school uniforms. Mingyi Jin was wow. working at SM at the time. Yeah, we so know about the abortion. Plagiarism is not something new for her. But again, this is just an speculation to what she was referring to. Oh, I see. Then April comes. Hive asks Mingyi Jin to resign, and the public opinion campaign is allegedly about to start. A wave of articles accusing BTS and other Hive groups of different things starts being published by South Korean media. But BTS. Car manipulation. Investigation on allegations. That that jeggy. What is that? Is that like plagiarism? Of course, is the center of attention. BTS manipulates charts. Oh, chart rates, manipulation. Sales plagiarizes music, and even BTS is linked to a cult. One after what? the other, <laughs> nonstop. Baseless rumors are published as serious accusations. This didn't stop for days. But let's look closely oh, at some these bullshit. rumors. The accusation that BTS manipulates their numbers started in 2015 because it was unbelievable that a group from a small company could outsell groups from the big three labels. Oh, the shit. rumors were so poor. Wait a from minute. A small company could out They're popping off with Young Forever already? Outsell groups from the big three labels. The rumors were so prominent back then that BTS's label Big Kid was brought to court. Big Kid Wait, was that won, bad? And the case was terminated. Ooh, Actually, that's right. the investigation made it obvious that BTS's growth was so organic that they started selling well since 2014 and slowly started outselling the Big Three in 2015. But the media was so centered around the big labels that they never reported about BTS's continuing growth. BTS climbed to the top very little by little, but because that's they true. were not from the Big Three, no one it's took one them like, seriously. No one saw them as a threat and no no one considered them real competition. Only when they started winning major awards against Big Three groups, the media and fans of the Big Three started accusing BTS of paying for their achievements. But like this investigation showed, BTS's numbers only seemed as a surprise yeah, because jealous of people. all the media play surrounding the Big Three. BTS legally claimed their name, but this smear campaign was horrific. These accusations from nine years ago are now being resurfaced for no reason right now? almost in the form of spam. Some are even asking for a new investigation to happen, although there are no reasons for a new investigation. Yeah, they already to did this one. day, all of BTS's numbers make sense. They made sense then, and they make sense now. 
their numbers of album sales, streams, and tour crowds have always matched. BTS's numbers are massive because they truly have a massive audience. And you can actually see this audience in their sold out stadium tours. Yeah, but when you try to buy concert tickets. For BTS is not even present. Their fans always show up. This cannot be said about some of the biggest groups in K-pop. Their numbers yeah, they are... Didn't, didn't like the award shows? Like the Mama, MMA, all those start like selling less tickets because BTS isn't showing up. I think I read something like that. Always match. They have millions of album sales, but very few streams. They have millions of sales, but struggle to sell out concerts that are supposed to meet their sales numbers. But of course, there's no investigation for them. The same way, rumors about BTS, plagiarizing music, concepts, and more are being reported by South Korean media out of nowhere, just like in 2014 and 2016. But once again, these accusations are years old and they have already won every single one of their cases. This is not being reported by South Korean media. Only the rumors well, that's good. A new rumor being shared is that BTS is part of a religious cult because the university they attended has used BTS's image for promotion and the founder of the university is allegedly linked to a cult. Oh, Although multiple idols dumb. from multiple labels have attended and promoted this same online oh, university, have they only now? BTS are the ones being accused of being part of a cult. As a response, Big Kid, the university, and even the organization accused of being a cult have released statements saying that BTS has nothing to do with them. But once again, of the course. validity of the accusations are not the point of this smear campaign. Hive showed in court a conversation in which Min Hee Jin says the following, whether the Fair Trade Commission investigates or not, all we need is a headline. This is nothing more than a public opinion campaign. And By so that's how this works. Of BTS, the public it starts doubting the actions of HYBE as a company, and many take Min Hee Jin's side. More importantly, by putting BTS's name in every headline at it gets any popularity. cost, the accusations against Min Hee Jin and HYBE take a backseat. Why do you smear campaign to happen? When I first heard about K-pop, there was a misconception shared by the international general public. K-pop is a project created and promoted by the South Korean government. government. It's Although a private company. <laughs> and fully believed this idea, it did create a misleading picture of who BTS is. Because BTS is undeniably the most recognizable name from South Korea. From the international point of view, it's easy to perceive BTS as this beloved and heavily promoted group by not only the K-pop <coughs> industry, but also by the South Korean media and government. They are proud of BTS, so of course they wouldn't instantly believe these baseless rumors, right? This cannot be further from the truth. Like this 2015 investigation proved, BTS was a surprise for the K-pop industry. And not Nobody expected it. The K-pop industry maintained a well-established hierarchy of power. The big three companies run by businessmen with not only a lot of money but with a lot of power created an industry in which they are always at the top. Their groups were the only ones that could truly compete to be the most popular because their groups are the only ones being promoted by the media. This was always like this, no exceptions. This was until BTS appeared and completely destroyed the pattern. When BTS debuted in 2013, their label Big Hit was not even a medium label like many others. It was a very small company that was close to bankruptcy. And they BTS managed to do was it. their last chance of surviving in the industry. And as you know now, it worked. Oh, yeah. Because BTS didn't have opportunities in South Korean mainstream media, they heavily relied on social media and the strategy the K-pop industry dismissed because they already owned the narrative. They already own South Korea's media and public. But BTS's genuine social media presence helped them gain a worldwide following so big that surpassed yeah, the every K-pop lives or the content. Combined. In other words, BTS did not, does not, and will never rely on traditional media. With this context, it's easier to understand why the industry is so open to entertain and even promote negative rumors against the biggest money maker in the K-pop industry. They uh, will do all of this because they don't have power over BTS. The funny thing is that Hive doesn't have power over BTS either, so they shouldn't be part of this conflict at all. Out of all the sub-labels, Big Hit Music is the only independent 
present an unlisted label in Hype. In theory, Hype and Adore can destroy each other to pieces, and Big Kid would survive. But that is not really the point. The downfall of Hype is an opportunity to proclaim the downfall of BTS and the rise of the Big Three. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Be. It's at the this same point. story from the Western music industry. The Big Three creates, promotes, and celebrates its own artists. Everyone else is treated mm. as an obstacle. South Korean media, or the Big Three, in particular, is very salty about BTS becoming the most successful group without their help, so they are more than willing to share baseless rumors. But it's only them. As you can see, the legal battle between Hype and Minghee Jin is being reported by international media. Oh, but it this is. This new campaign against BTS is not. Okay. This is because oh, yeah, the true, legal true. battle, but the smear campaign. Yeah, Bora said he did say that the, the rumors just like staying as rumors and not in the in the news against bts is not mm. this is because the legal battle is real but the rumors against bts come from nothing and have no evidence so there's no exactly. single accusation to take seriously these old twitter accounts with zero followers are uh, not sources the only we ones need, will we need to stop using twitter comments as like evidence of hate and stuff like that everybody on twitter just talks shit about everything no matter what you do. We need to take these comments as serious accusations or South Korean media. And again, this is not new. It happens to BTS a lot because they are the biggest quote-unquote enemy. But South Korean media has previously facilitated smear campaigns against multiple artists. One example I think it's important to talk about is the smear campaign against Tablo from the group Epic Tablo? Because he's one of the few who have been very outspoken about it. Oh. Random people online accuse Tablo of lying about graduating from Stanford University. University. These well, isn't, random isn't that something you can check? became front page news in South Korea. Tablo posted his university transcripts, but South Korean netizens did not believe no, him, my. and the accusations only intensified. So Tablo visited Stanford University and made a documentary in which he had the university registrar reprint his documents while Stanford professors tested to the validity of the documents, all on camera. Additionally, the university and the police provided proof that he graduated from from Stanford. But like I said before, it doesn't matter how ridiculous the accusations are. It doesn't matter how much proof you give or how many investigations you win. Smear campaigns in South Korea are aggressive and there's nothing to stop them. Tablo said, Black Mirror wasn't out yet, but I felt like this was some Damn. horror sci-fi thing Tablo. where the entire country I had been living in collectively agreed to basically mind me. Nothing I would say would be accepted as truth, and they have collectively agreed to be delusional. It's either they are delusional, all of them, or I'm delusional. Can you understand now why the current campaign against BTS, as silly as it sounds, is mentally draining for BTS and yeah. the fandom? BTS confessed that the previous smear campaigns against them nearly made them break up. So the I'm glad they didn't break up because of rumors because that means they would win. That the haters would win. Just like Tablo said, it was exhausting for BTS to deny and win their cases, all for the smear campaigns to continue. are not even here to defend themselves. Now it's the most convenient time for these accusations to So that's why, because they can't defend themselves? do you really think this is not a planned attack, part of the public opinion campaign from April? Do you really think being discovered would stop her plan after doing witchcraft and planning <laughs> for this exact moment? Yeah, the shaman. <laughs> BTS is swinging. I hope they win. BTS cannot defend themselves because right now they are not civilians. They are enlisted in the military and Mingi Jin knew this. According to forensic data, she waited for the exact range of time when all the seven members wouldn't be present to start her independence plan. So although they cannot respond as civilians right now, BTS's response through their label is that because this is a movement that has become excessive, they are now engaging with a new separate Good. legal team especially dedicated they to sue every person 
on defaming and slandering them. Big Kid even said that it won't matter if the people defaming BTS retract their words by eliminating their comments or articles. That's how serious they are taking this case, Damn. that's how bad the comments are. We can already see some of the results, as certain media outlets are firing writers and systematically deleting posts. However, many feel like this is not enough. BTS will come back and the media will appropriate their achievements once again while ignoring all the damage they helped create. Just like always, the South Korean entertainment industry will ask BTS to represent them and promote K-pop as a whole whenever they have the opportunity. Yeah, Remember of course. that the South Korean government not only investigated BTS back then, but also pushed BTS to represent the country multiple times. BTS mm -hmm. wanted to start their military service around the summer of 2022, but the government begged them to become ambassadors for the World Expo 2030, to the point of contacting the parents of the BTS members Wait, so they, they could convince it? them, again, Damn. for the media and the public, BTS oh, after the parents? had to accept. BTS cancelled their plans of starting their military service during the summer. They accepted to become ambassadors and perform a free concert to help South Korea win the bid for the World Expo. They changed all of their plans, just for the government to leave the responsibility of the concert to BTS. If the concert was a disorganized mess or ended up in tragedy, you can guess who the media would blame. Oh so yeah, BTS good, have good thing no their concerts are always... But pay themselves to have a safe free concert for their government. When is this going to stop? Will South Korea ever have the backs of BTS or will they forever be jealous of the group that didn't need them to succeed? For the, the government themselves, I don't think it's jealousy. I think they're just trying to use them as much as they can take advantage as much as they can Without getting alarmed, you need to know this. Out of all these smear campaigns against BTS, this is one of the worst ones. Maybe not the worst, but it's definitely one of the most baseless and aggressive. And we need to expect more rumors to come in the upcoming weeks because Mingi Jin and Hive have been in court for just one day. All well, they already started. Accusations against the biggest group in the world are normal, but now it's an organized effort and BTS are not here to defend themselves. BTS has cleaned their name time and time time again with previous smear campaigns. They have defeated every single accusation, but that doesn't matter. By creating new rumors and bringing all the previous accusations at once, even if they are 100% debunked, BTS's image is put in question. The accusations will be on the front pages, and that's all they need. In times like this, there's no general public who will listen and applaud them. All they're going to do is jump on the hate train like they always do. Because the media is spreading this hate campaign so aggressively and the general public is consuming these rumors the only ones who can defeat these narratives are the fandom oh, so good thing the fandom is ever, huge it's important to bring back the small fandom mindset we had in previous smear campaigns aggressive rumors are only defeated with aggressive support that's the only thing that can drown the rumors right now that was the force that made bts survive their previous smear campaigns and become as big as they are now bts Army. had no one in the industry supporting them and for new fans who met bts as mainstream BTS, it can be hard to accept that to this day, BTS continues lacking industry support. And BTS has clearly said that they wanted to break up in 2018 because they couldn't stand this treatment. So please take this smear campaign seriously. We know that BTS will be celebrated as a nation's pride when they come back in 2025. Oh, yeah. They will be asked to represent the country and their achievements will be considered K-pop's achievements. But don't forget this moment. Just like with the smear campaigns from 2015, 2017, and 2018 let bts know that we are here and we oh. know the truth that's right rm album j-hope album the single john cook single coming soon wow what a mess <laughs> so both min he jane and Bong, you know, look bad in the story, but I didn't know about everything that Min Ejin did. Going with shamans, trying to trying to steal new jeans and that company, hoping that BTS goes to the military so that she could try to like take over and make negotiations, and then Bong's ego. It was pretty bad, but the video focused on. BTS, which 
apparently there's just the whole smear campaign talking to shit which is nothing new right ever since their their debut they've had people talk shit they've had people try to put them down but they never let it stop them but i feel like bts will survive because i feel like the fandom is so huge that they can be louder than the haters i mean if they did it before then they could do it now that they have even even more popularity so yeah even though it's bullshit that there's all these rumors i feel like it's not gonna affect them too much maybe a little bit and army is still here waiting so a hundred percent ets is gonna survive this it's still bullshit that this happens though it's just it's just jealousy right that's what all of this comes from just people being jealous of bts's success but yeah you know that was an interesting video it was nice to learn more about it i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching